Shrimad Bhagavatam 1.7.30 Samhatyanyonyam Ubhayos Tejashi Sharasamrute Avrutya Rodasi Khamcha Vavruddhate Arka Vahanivats So here the action on the war field of Kurukshe or on the war field in during the confrontation between Ashwatthama and Arjuna is being described by Sutta Goswami to the sages at Naimasharanya. Um, on the instruction of Krishna, Arjuna has just countered uh, Ashwatthama's Brahmastra with his own Brahmastra. Samhatya, when there is combination of the two Brahmastras, Anyonyam, the two combined together, Ubhayos, both of them, Tejasi, Sharasamrute, the glare of those two, Sharasamrute, those two weapons, it covered practically all of the unit horizon, Avrutya Rodasi Khamcha, it covered the whole sky and the outer space far out, Vavruddhate Arkavahanivat. And it created a blazing fire like the sun globe. So normally the sun is out there in the sky and especially if it is summer, then the sun is blazing hot. But if the sun is just overhead, now we know that the sun is far away, but if the sun comes very close to us in the sky, then its heat would become unbearable for us. Similarly, if the or if while the sun was there in the sky, if suddenly another sun like a thing appeared very close to us. And sometimes some science fiction movies, they show some uh, some spacecraft belonging to an aliens, belonging to some aliens. There's some there's some sort of alien invasion on the Earth, and it can be quite just the sight of a spacecraft, even if it is not uh, immediately showering weapons, but if it is some sort of alien object that creates concern, even fear or terror. But what to speak of sometimes when something is there up in the sky which is uh, which is pervading the whole of the sky and is actually creating such an uh, creating a uh, blazing effulgence, a blazing heat that gets appears to be about be about to scorch everyone. Quite often when a bomb explodes, there is not just huge noise. The noise is the initial thing. But after that, it's like when the new atom bomb exploded at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. First there was a terrible noise, but what came after the noise was even worse. The toxic gas, it spread in the sky and spread everywhere. So, here the terrible heat is spreading all over. And that, it's Vauruddhate Arkavahaniva, just like the fire caused by uh, the uh, sun being very close to us, how that would scorch every, all the directions. That kind of scorching effect is happening over here. here. Text 31. Drishtvastra tejas tutayos trilokan pradahan mahat dahyamanaha praja sarva samvartakam amamasata So drishtva Astra Tejas Tutayos. So, on seeing the blazing effulgence of this weapon, Trilokan Pradhan Mahat, how actually it was burning all the three worlds. Dahyamana Praja Sarva. On seeing this, the people everywhere just rushed out and they were horrified, petrified. Samvartakam Amamasta. They thought this is the Samvarta. So Samvartak is the uh, is the force that is released at the time of destruction of the universe. 
so there can be somewhere the clouds and which which were for example uh, uh, hurled upon Raja by Indra but Samvartha can also be a fire at the time of the cosmic annihilation various things are discharged various things fall on the earth and they start acting on the earth destroying the earth devastating things over here and one of those things is the fire of some fire of destruction Samvartakam normally people go about their lives but when some some sudden destruction starts happening or devastation and destruction starts happening then people just can't go on with their lives it's like when the twin towers were attacked at that time what happened is that wherever people were and they heard this uh, devastating news and they just rushed out of their houses now of course people may not rush out of their houses they immediately turn on their mobiles or their computers and see if something is broadcast on the net but if they can see for us, the devastation is scary to watch and it is, it is riveting even if it is not about to happen to oneself even if some terrible scenes of devastation are seen on movie people just get glued to it with a with a uh, sickening sense of fascination but what to speak when there is a devastation that is happening uh, just around us and it may envelop us also so people started thinking is this the, some, is this the time of uh, cosmic destruction uh, suddenly come prematurely is this the fire of uh, cosmic annihilation that has come like that people started thinking and this destruct you know, Brahma, Brahmastra is itself extremely powerful and the collision of two Brahmastras is even more powerful so this threat was felt not just by the residents of the earth but by residents of uh, all the three planetary systems all the three levels of planetary systems all over the three worlds this threat was felt and people became concerned horrified and seeing this Arjuna immediately took emergency action to curb the flames that is mentioned in this next text text 32 prajopadravam alaksha lokavati karam chatam matam chavasudevasya sanjahar junodvayam sanjahar sanjahar means to counter so on seeing prajopad upadravam alaksha upadrava is disturbance agitation terror of the Praja when he saw that people in general were agitated were devastated Alakshan saying this Loka Vithikaram Jatam it was not just that he was people, people were disturbed but he saw that actually the worlds may be destroyed if something is not checked when a fire is set a lot matters on the timing you know, those who are firefighters they know that it is vital to reach near a fire on time uh, even a matter of few moments can be fatal if firefighters reach a few minutes few moments late the fire might just have consumed one more big item and by that it might have become so big that it would be impossible to uh, counter it so time is of enormous essence uh, it can be what can be a minor fire can become a major fire can become a devastating fire if it is not curbed in time so loka vatikaram chitam arjuna saw that not only were people disturbed but actually there was a big threat of devastation and matam chavasudevasya and he remembered what krishna had said that he should you should, you should discharge his own weapon first to counter it but then you should re retract both the weapons Sanjahara Arjuna Dvayam so Dvaya both of them both means the two weapons Sanjaha Sanjaha is Sanjahar Arjuna so here R R sound is alliteration Sanjahar Arjuna Dvayam so Arjuna withdrew both the weapons and thus he uh, saved the world from the devastation which could have resulted if the two weapons had colli collided on and continued to mm, battle against each other 
टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी थर्टी थ्री आसादरसा दारुण गौतमी सुत बबंद मार्श ताम्राक्ष पशुन रचनया यथा सो तम आसाद्य सो इज देर आफ्टर देर आफ्टर वॉट डिड यू डू आसाद्य ही वेंट अप टू मैरेस्टेड हिम तरसा expertly so oh, the, the danger has been encountered but still the danger source of the danger is free and it cannot be allowed to be uh, remain free suppose some some terrorists have set off a time bomb and say the authorities the police or the anti terrorist squad or whoever they come to know about it first thing they will want to do is make sure that they uh, they counter the bomb they diffuse the bomb as they say they diffuse the bomb before it explodes and then after that the terrorist is still roaming free then the terrorist may cause some other damage and devastation also so instead what needs to be done is the terrorist also has to be curbed so there has to be arrested or shot at sight whatever so now arjuna decided not to uh, do act of vigilant justice over here vigilant justice means that people take the law in their own hands and this happens in cases of mass anger there is a mob lynching of people sometimes so what happens is that people feel angered at some wrong doing to some by done by someone and they take the law in their own hands and they lynch the person they beat the person sometimes kill the person also so here it is stated that rather than narjuna was actually the arif arjuna had killed the ashwatthama over there that would not have been a vigilant justice at all because arjuna was a part of the royal family and arjuna also was had the power to kill Ashwatthama, but he decided to take him to Yudhishthir, who was their official king, and let Yudhishthir make a decision. So he decided to arrest him. Tata Asa de Tarasa. So he arrested him, Tarasa. Uh, that was uh, expertly, quickly before the before Ashwatthama could flee. Arjuna had pounced on him and uh, caught him. Darunam Gautami Sutam. So what Daruna? is coming once again in this chapter it had come earlier while describing the weapon which was extreme and the fire which is coming because of the unknown weapon arjuna had asked what is this and he used the word daruna to describe the danger which it posed so here now earlier the daruna was used to describe the danger now it is being used to describe the danger, the person who is the source of the danger so darunam gautam isutam dronacharya was the son of gautam rishi so he was he was called as sometimes as gautami and gautami sutam refers to the son of uh, the son of gautam rishi that is uh, ashwatthama bandham babandham amarsha tamaraksha babandha amarsha so he immediately tied him up he was angry it's our uh, yashwatthama had done crime after crime after crime you know first is he had actually slaughtered the pandavas sons and all their remaining army while they were just sleeping and now he had discharged a weapon which could have destroyed the whole world so arjuna was furious and he had every right to be furious tamaraksha so tamaraksha means that he has his eyes were effulgent with anger they were blazing like copper pashun rashanaya yatha pashun just like a rope babanda he was tied with ropes this is the animal me tied up he tied up now normally uh, even while arresting people there are different ways of arresting you know if there is a person who belongs to a royal family a king then the king's royal dignity is not impugned even after being arrested but in this case it was not like that arjuna was so furious and he did not want to take any risk of ashwatthama fleeing in any way 
So he tied him up. He did not just arrest him and hold him there. He tied him up with ropes and tying up with ropes is usually done for animals. And the point of this is that Arjuna was furious and Arjuna recognized that what a maniac person Ashwatthama had become that he could do anything and therefore he required physical fetters to be controlled and that's why he used text 34 Shibirayani nishantam Rajva badvari pumbalat Praharjunam prakupito Bhagwanam bujekshanaha Shibiraya nishantam so he took him to their Shibir. Shibir is the encampment when the war Kuru, Kurukshetra war was going on. The war was fought not near the civilian territory. The war was far, far from the civil, far, was fought far from the civilian territory at Kurukshetra. So now the, when the two armies had to stay, they had their camp. And Yudhishthir was waiting at the camp, so so Arjuna decided to take Ashwatthama to do Shibira. At that time, when he was taking him, Nishantam, Rajva Badva Ripumbalat. He was bound by ropes, and he was being taken forcibly, being taken forcibly towards that destination. So Praha Arjunam Prakupito, unto Arjuna Praha spoke Prakupito while. Krishna too was furious. Bhagawan Ambujekshana. Krishna was furious. At the same time, Krishna is referred to here as Ambujekshana. Ambujekshana is that he was lotus eyed person. So this Ambujekshana is compared by the commentators with Tamaraksha, which was used in text 33, the previous text, to refer to Arjuna. So Arjuna was angry, Krishna was angry. Both of them are mentioned as uh, Prakupito, or they are here. The word Prakupito is used to refer to to refer to Krishna, and Amarsha is used. Babandha Amarsha. The Amarsha is also used to describe the anger of Arjuna. But the difference is, although both of them are angry. The point is conveyed that Krishna still remains transcendental. He is still the lotus eyed lord. Even when he is angry, he still he still looks beautiful. He still looks charming. And he still remains transcendental. When we say Krishna remains transcendental, even while experiencing anger, that does not mean that his anger is artificial. Rather, it means that the anger doesn't overwhelm him. He, he, it is he who voluntarily chooses various emotions, and those emotions they enhance his pastimes, they fl flavor his pastimes, and yet he always remains transcendental. So, the nature of the supreme is that he is superior to everything even to the force of emotions and here krishna is uh, krishna is angry and he will speak cautionary words that can seem angry to arjuna and yet krishna while speaking all this he remains transcendental so the ambujaksha the description of the lotus eyed lord that conveys that even when he is angry he is beautiful and just as lotus even while living in a dirty water, it remains clean and rises above the dirt. So like that, even when Krishna is, is in a, a provocative situation, which naturally uh, triggers justified anger, still Krishna doesn't get controlled by that anger, but instead remains in control and uses the emotions for the right purposes. 
so text 35 now there is no Shri Bhagavan Uvache explicitly there was the word Praha in the previous text itself in the body of the text so text 35 Mainam Parthar Hasitratum Brahma Bandhum Imam Yahi Yo Asa Ana Anagasaha Suktan Avadhi Nishibalakan. So, Mainam Yuma Enam, not unto this person. Partha Arhasitratum. Do not deliver this person. This person does not deserve to be given any mercy. Tratum means to be released, to be delivered. This person doesn't deserve to be delivered. Arhasi. Brahma Bandhum Imam Jahi. He is not a Brahmana, he is a Brahma Bandhu. He is a degraded, a fallen associate of a Brahmana. Yo Asa Anagasaha. So, Yo Asa, what has he done? This person has Anagasaha. Is those who had no faults. Suptan Avadhin Nishi Balakan. So, Balakan, those who were children, he should not have killed them at all. But he killed them and not on, what were his faults? Not only did he kill them, he killed them at night and at two when they were sleeping. So the war codes were normally that equals should fight with equals. So Ashwatthama was a trained warrior in the generation of Arjuna and his sons were of a younger generation. There should not have been a fight between them at all. But even if the fight is there, it should have been a fair fight. Normally when night time would come the warriors would stop fighting that would be the normal Kshatriya code of course sometimes mm -hmm. uh, in the heat of the war they would keep fighting occasionally it happened especially towards the later days of the war but still even when that happened mm -hmm. at least the warriors were al alert to kill someone when that person was sleeping that is brutal that is mm, horrible that is uh, uh, despicable. It is such that even words can't describe what they are doing. So, Mainam Partha Rasitra Tum. So, Krishna is telling Arjuna here that Ashwatthama does not deserve, does not deserve to be released. So, here normally. when a person is present to talk about that person without taking that person into account that is considered disrespectful so for example somebody you know two people are talking about a third person that third, third person is present that third person say I am present here you know if you are talking about me take my opinion also into consideration but now here Ashwatthama has been arrested and as he has been arrested it's clear enough that he is a prisoner and he is not going to have much of a say we will see that in this whole pastime Ashwatthama does not speak one word he knows to a fair extent that he has spoken brute he has acted in a despicable way and his actions are indefensible so he doesn't speak and nor is he asked to speak the whole the scene is taken by, con by discussion and consultation among mm, various people and then due justice will be administered. Mm -hmm. Now if there is a doubt about the crime then there can be a hearing and there can be a, a court case and things like that but when there is a and the crime is very clear and the crime is not even being denied and it's not even deniable because it's so it's so clear what has happened and why it has been and how it has been done then it is primarily a discussion between the jury to decide what should be done so in this whole pastime although it is the fate of Ashwatthama that is going to be decided Ashwatthama has sealed his fate by his own actions and thus he has no say left uh, for um, changing it in any way just like if a person chooses to you jump from a 10 story building after that uh, it is that person's fate that has been sealed but that person has very little choice afterwards uh, about what can be done the person is simply going to fall so like that 
Ashwatthama will very uh, Ashwatthama will have practically no low role in this uh, past time uh, till now. Now Krishna is making underscoring the point which Prabhupada also makes in the purport that Ashwatthama should not be treated like a Brahmana because he is a Brahma Bandhu. You know, a Brahmana would never um, commit so horrible a crime as killing sleeping children. So that is despicable. And person ultimately is defined not by one's position but by one's actions. So if a Brahmana does not act Brahminically, then that person is considered not to be a Brahmana but to be a Brahma Bandhu. And a person should be treated as a Brahma Bandhu accordingly. So Brahmana are not to be punished, but Brahma Bandhus can and should be dealt with the dealt should can and should be dealt with appropriately according to the principles of justice, principles of and they should be given the appropriate penalty. So Krishna is stressing that he he doesn't deserve any mercy as might be given to a Brahmana because this person is not a Brahmana. He has acted in a horrendous way. And Krishna, after st st stressing that um, Ashutama doesn't des deserve any mercy, he, he quotes a general principle in the next verse, that is the text 36. Mattam pramattam unmattam suptam balam striyam jadam prapannam viratham bhitam naripum hanti dharma vet. So, dharma vet, one who knows the principles of dharma, Krishna says that. There are these um, 10 kinds of people whom one should not be, one should not attack or kill. Mattam pramattam unmattam. Mattam is one who has become, um, one who has become, dist all, all of these refer to, we could say it refers to intoxication. But there is a difference the way Srila Prabhupada explains it. Mattam pramattam unmattam means that one who is careless for whatever reason, maybe it's compl uh, complacency or whatever, if a person is careless, pramattam, if one has become intoxicated or unmattam, that means one has become insane. Sometimes one may become insane because of grief or one might just become, lose one's mental balance uh, and one might have a bout of insanity or one might be suffering regularly from insanity. Whatever it is in such situations, mattam, pramattam, unmattam, in such situations one, should, one cannot be targeted, one should not be targeted. Suptam balam striyam jadam. Further, when one is sleeping, this is the case that is most relevant to um, the situation of Ashwatthama. When one is sleeping, one should not be attacked. See the um, suptam balam striyam jadam. So, if somebody is a child, uh, somebody is a woman, somebody is jadam, that means somebody is foolish, that person is not capable of fighting at all. It's like basically. Uh, the war, although there was this uh, desire to win, but the war was also seen as a test of skills. And just like if a baller is bowling to a batsman, the baller has to, uh, the baller should bowl when the batsman has taken the proper stance. You know, if one over is over and the baller uh, without any warning, it suddenly comes in and starts bowling and the batsman is not on guard and at that, that time the batsman is bowled and the umpire will not consider that to be a wicket because the batsman was not on guard and in fact if the batsman is not on guard and that the baller uh, bowls, it is the baller who will be considered blameworthy. It will be, it is so uh, for the, for cricket to be a fair test of skills between the baller and the batsman, you know, both have to be alert. So if the batsman is looking somewhere else, of course, after the baller has started his, uh, his run up and when the baller is in the run up, if at that time the batsman gets distracted, even then sometimes if the batsman is distracted, the batsman will just move away from the crease. So for example, behind the baller, if there is something that uh, somebody moves on the side screen behind. So usually, uh, then the batsman has a right to just move away and then the baller stops in the run up or the baller may just throw the ball but that's, all, that's, that's considered a dead ball. So the point is that the, uh, although the baller wants to get the batsman out 
uh, the uh, how the bats bowler gets the batsman out is also important. It is not that by hook or crook that can be done. It is because the bowler should uh, ball, the bowler should outwit or outplay the batsman, and that is where the test of skill comes in, and that is where it becomes a sport. Otherwise, it just uh, it, there is no fun in it left. If by unfair means somebody mm, kills, uh, somebody def somebody gets a batsman out, then there is no fun in that. Then they say that, okay, you may win, but the sportsmanly spirit is not there, and the rules are violated, and the <laughs> the the whole purpose of sports is lost. So war was also fought with certain codes. Of course, war is far more far more serious than. A sports, any sports for that matter, there's a matter of life or death, but still the war is to be fought with certain codes. So, for one who is suktam balam striyam janam, for one those who are not fighting, they should not be attacked. Prapannam viratham bhitam, prapannam, if somebody surrenders, then that person also should not be attacked. Viratham, if a person has come off his chariot, that person should not be attacked. Bhitam. A person is fearful, not ready to fight, and that person, person also should not be attacked. So, Narupam Naripum Hanti Dharma Ved. So, Arjuna uh, is being reminded here by Krishna that mm, actually uh, these are all the conditions in which a warrior is not meant to attack, and a warrior attacks, then that warrior has violated the code of Kshatriya conduct, and here there is a grievous violation that has happened, and therefore. Ashwatthama does not deserve any mercy. We'll continue.